All right, so um, to start with, I will show you what we're going to do the first step. And this works off the whole concept of, like, you can paint the earth, and that makes the earth yours. But when you first paint it, it acts like a putty voxel. Um, so we don't really need to use the putty voxel part of it, except for to make our stencil. And we're going to make a stencil, and then we're going to take the shape of the earth that we like, and we're going to put that shape down over the stencil and make an inlay. And then later we're going to take that shape and cut it out of things to make an insert. And we're also going to have this shape saved and made into an arch. So you can do a lot of things with it just in one step, and what happens is you wind up getting like the same repeated curve throughout everything you do and it gives kind of a harmony to your build. It makes it very like, you know, repetitive and flowing, but in a good way, not not in a bad way. And then you can get some curves that aren't pure circles. Um, so I, I like this little piece of earth right here. So I'm going to take um, part of this hill and just paint it. And y'all can feel free to hop in and paint any part of a curve that you think is nice. Uh, oops, I'm not going to delete it. I'm going to paint it. That's a mistake. And once you've painted it, you've made it um, putty. So we're going to copy it and then paste it once. And then we're going to save that for later. We don't have any uh, rights. Okay, now everyone's got access. Or should, it's not letting me pick it. There we go. Everyone should have access on both claims. And all of this can be used to make curves. You can see I copied out that piece of the hill here, and that one slice made this curve, and it's not smooth, this one. Uh, on one side it is smooth, and on the other side it's jagged, and I'll show you how to make it smooth, make it into an arch you can use in your building, and also make it into an inlay using this trick. I bring light. So, why is it jagged? Let me, let me fix this. I accidentally, I accidentally deleted and that probably messed it up. Yeah, it did. Okay, let me fix that. I'm just going to paste it over this one because it's pretty much going to be the same thing. Okay, so it'll be jagged when it comes out, but that's okay. So keep, you know, remember where you've painted. Paint it something that won't bleed, because if you paint it something that bleeds, it's going to just go whoosh and be all in the terrain and you won't see it. <laughs> so make it like stucco or wood or something that's going to stand out. Um, probably not lumicite until they make it so you can build easy with lumicite, because sometimes for me it disappears on my indicator. Okay, so once you've got your spot that you like, you're going to, the first step, we're going to, okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the stencil on the ground so you can see how to do the inlay. So since this is a putty voxel here on the ground, you can paint it any color you want, and you can embed the shape of the paint of the ground into something without changing it. And that makes no sense till you see it, so I'm just going to copy it and paste it and you'll go, oh, okay, that's what she means. I've got a copy on my mouse. You also want to have one pasted out to the side. I've got a copy of my mouse. I'm going to paste the one from the ground down into the ground here.
and see it just paints a pixelated version of the curve that I pulled out of the ground. So make sure you do paint, paint without error. And make sure when you paint into the surface, you're painting straight from the ground. This is what a putty voxel does when you paint it onto another voxel, it just changes the color of the voxel. So basically I'm just saving a lot of time because I don't have to redo the curve point by point this way. I can just copy it like this. And you should all be happy I realized I could do this like 30 minutes before, <laughs> otherwise I was going to make everyone get out the selection tool and copy it like bit by bit by bit and that would have been a pain. There is a way to do that, copy it bit by bit by bit, but we'll do it later. Or in an offline tutorial or something, so everyone doesn't have to sit through that. I'm sorry, what are we supposed to do after we copy it? Okay, so to paste, um, to get, like I did, an impression of your curve onto here, you're going to copy your painted area out of the ground. Well, but we also want to have one painted, we also want to have one pasted in the air, because we're going to manipulate it. But to do the inlay in the ground, you want to make it a putty version from the ground that you've painted directly onto this white surface. And it's going to look jagged and crappy, that's okay. I think you might have copied your actual arch. That's okay, that'll fix it. Uh, you're just going to run into there's deformities in the surface uh, because the arch that we copy out has deformities. It's not flat and smooth. But if you just copy the putty, it has no deformities because it has no shape. So it'll just copy the jagged version of the arch instead. Yeah, straight from the earth. That was from here. Yes. Hmm. Hope I didn't damage it over here. My selection tool still even selected there. That's very curious. That, that's what I get when I copy yours. Let me try mirroring it. Yeah, hey, it gets it too. Hey. I was running as fast as I could. Try, um, here I'll show a trick. It, it, okay, sometimes if it has deformities, and this is what happened with Snapdragon, I couldn't fix it, so I like tried to fix it and tried to fix it, finally figured out how to fix it. You take the line tool and run it over the surface, and it'll bring it all up to the surface. And this way you don't have to deal with your floor and lay having deformities when you start to work on it. Um, just don't do this on a finished product and expect it to do anything if you're using microvoxels or stretch voxels in it because it's going to distort them and make it look bad. And you can make your line tool really big too and just do it faster. Is it supposed to be one voxel or more than one? It, it should be one voxel because we're going to just use that one. We're going to make this a one voxel thin curved arch. And you can, if you don't like the curve you wind up with, because there's really no telling what the final product will be, other than it'll be a smooth version of whatever you put into the ground. It just doesn't like me. Try mirroring it. For whatever reason, it, it did it for Kit when he mirrored it, and then he mirrored it the other way and it didn't do it. And I have no explanation for why, except for maybe I was fooling around in the ground in there. And Are you sure you just painted you didn't add into the ground? Is it 
because if you use the add tool, it'll it'll make it distort. But I'm confused too because I I took yours and pasted it, and it, it did this for me. But mine's facing the other. Mine's facing the same direction. I don't know. It seems to have a jagged edge on it this time. Make sure you're copying the one from the ground too. It's okay if it has a jagged edge on one side, because we're going to end up with the... See how it's smooth on one side and jagged on the other? We're going to wind up with the smooth side, so... Don't worry about that. that is, that's okay. Hey, snap. Basically, all we've done so far is we've taken the selection tool, found like a side of the earth that has a cool shape that we like, and you can pick whatever one you want. Um, you do the selection tool and then paint it, and then you're going to copy it out and paste it into the ground, and that's going to stencil in the color that you're going to shape into your inlay. And it's going to be pixelated, don't worry about that because we're going to smooth it up with the inlay. Oh, there you go. Not sure what happened, but look, it's fixed. Ta-da! Oh. <laughs> That's underneath whatever I did. Magic! <laughs> she did a magic maybe trick. My second, <clears throat> maybe my second one I went down too far and didn't notice. Someone said my volume is too small. Can you guys hear me okay? too low. Shall I just shove a selection tool into the ground? Yeah. And copy a triangle out? Well, you, you gotta paint oh. it. Put it in the ground and then paint it. And um, then paste what you've got selected onto this white surface. Yeah, just take a selection of the ground, like make a straight box on the ground, right? Like over here I yeah. have this stripe, and then you just paint it, and then once you paint it you've made basically a shape out of putty voxels, and it'll be putty voxels in the ground, so you can take, okay. you can copy what you painted here. Don't make it stucco, because we're putting on stucco surface, so you're going to be like, where'd it go? <laughs> Crap! Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did, and I'm like, oh wait, I probably need to repaint this. <laughs> no one's gonna see what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> Don't forget to paste for that air. Yeah. That's also important. Okay. Just copy it out and bring it over here. Yep, just copy it out um, and then paint it on into the surface. It'll be flat. And then we're going to do some voxel mancy. Who's up for some voxel mancy? Ooh. So I got to go paint it onto the flat, the stucco part over here. Yep. On the ground. Yeah. That? Yep. And this is a great way to get like kind of sweeping curves and less than 45 degree angles. I'm not sure what uh, music you're hearing. I, I'm not, I don't have any music going on anything. Anamon said uh, he's hearing music behind me and uh, voices, voice voices. We're just a bunch of ladies here in, this, in the rain call, I'm pretty sure. Um, 
including my husband. I just called him a lady. He's laughing. All right. Okay. Now that you've copied your shape, we're going to go back to the copy of your shape that you pasted into the air. So snap. I forgot to tell you to do that. You're going to also make a copy in the air. And now we're going to manipulate this copy in the air till we get a smooth version of the curve. And then we're going to paste our curve down on that stamp you made into the stencil, into the white area over there. And of course the one that I stamped down is all wobbly. Yeah, that's fine. We'll that's fix it. I roll. Yeah. <laughs> it will be fixed. It will all be made better. So come back to your area over here and get get your curve and then we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to make it nice and pretty. So you can use it later. You can like make walls out of it, stair railing, whatever you want. Okay, so you're just gonna copy it and you're gonna put it next to itself four times. So you're gonna end up with five voxel thick thing of your curve, basically. So recopying the one we pasted in the air? Yep, and you're going to copy it next to itself four times, so it'll be just like a real thick um, thing of your shape repeated over and over again. And what we're going to wind up doing is smoothing it, and then we're going to use the line tool on it a little bit to make the surface of it nice and flat. And then I'm going to show you some trick with voxel putty that lets you make it completely flat. And then we're going to lay it down on top of your pixel shape that you made already. Well, that's getting ahead of ourselves. It almost looks flat once I pasted it, look. Yeah, it, it, but it'll have like some thickness and thinness in it. We're going to smooth all that out. Alright, once you have your five voxels, a uh, thick thing of, of what you've made, we're going to add onto the bottom and like a different color so you can see where it is, right? You're going to add onto the bottom some anchor voxels and to the back some anchor voxels and this will keep it from warping when we smooth it so the back and the bottom stay nice and flat and that way you can place it on things later if you want. So it's going to look like it's sitting in an L like this when you're done. It doesn't matter how wide it is, the, bot, the part you paste in on. I had trouble hearing that. What was that? I'm sorry. Is there a certain... Is it one box or two boxes that were pasted on the bottom of the sides? Um, I do three. It doesn't matter, though, honestly. You could probably get away with one. But I'm like a nervous Nancy, so I do three to make extra sure nothing bad happens to my pretty shape. <laughs> and this is going to protect it from the smooth tool, because the smooth tool likes to make it go woo crazy and all over the place. And so you'll end up with like the bottom curved and sticking up out of the air. That's what happened to the bottom of your inlay snap. And I did not know how to fix it till the next day. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, uh, this is a little late now. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I still got the idea. It's okay if you run out of room. There's plenty of room over here, and I can dig a hole uh, in this area because I don't think anyone's playing with it. And we also have under the surface here, we've got just an area cut out for doing um, doing like an impression. We're going to make this into a negative shape also, so you can cut it into things. Right, I think everyone's got it. Yeah, make sure your your things to keep it from going crazy with smooth are a different color so you can see where they are because you're not going to put it in the smooth tool. It's going to be separate from what you're smoothing. It's like there to guide your selection box for you. Now these actually kind of look cool in of themselves.
you see how like everybody's got a curve that's more or less completely different and most of them I'm looking at going you know I probably could make that by doing a pixelated version of what we just put in the ground but I don't know that I'd be able to get it to look as good and it's kind of cool to just copy out the earth it's like kind of inspirational to me to like go hmm this kind of looks like this and and work from there okay now that you've got your frames put on oh lady she might be fk She's she's not in being home, so she's listening to the stream. So yeah, so she's probably thirty seconds behind or something. Yeah. And I have my chat rolled all the way. She got a phone call. That's why she's behind. I've been oh, okay. relaying the stuff to her in our team speak because I've got two different uh, chat buttons for the two programs. Okay, so if you start talking to them and to us, we'll be like, oh, okay, she's talking to them. Because <laughs> I've done exactly. that. <laughs> I've done that. Okay. I just need to change the rate, rate called default because it opens my game setting window every time I use it. <laughs> oh my god. Right, she's about to put her bottom thing on. So now that you've got your frames in, what we're going to do is we're going to select your curve, that's, but not that frame you put on the bottom, right? So you're not going to select the bottom area that you just put on, and you're going to select the interior three rows. So the curve you made was five thick or more. You're going to select the middle three and not the frame. And the frame's going to anchor the bottom and keep it from going crazy. That'll be perfectly flat, can sit on a wall, go on a floor, or whatever. And then the exterior part that we layered onto our shape is going to keep smooth from pulling it. It's still going to be a little crooked when we pull it out. It's not perfect, but this will make the top of the curve completely smooth. So now we're going to activate smooth and control left click. And just do that like 10 times or so. Everybody's going, it's like a purple disco, like wee, all the smooth tools going crazy. All right, when you've gotten it smooth, you're gonna copy out the very center slice. What if you don't want it super smooth, like you're gonna do a landscape kind you don't of have thing. To. You kind of want it a little bit of... You can keep it lumpy. Yeah. That's the way you roll, and that's what you do. All right. Awesome. I got a big messed up blob of mine, so I can show you guys how to fix that. <laughs> it's see, it's never perfectly smooth. That's why I don't trust the smooth tool. That's why I don't let it do what it wants. Uh, I, I'm like, nope. I'm the boss of you, smooth tool. I control this axis. You can do what you want over there, though, and I'll fix it after. So once you've gotten it smoothed down, copy out the very slender slice, and we're going to make a big old mess. We're going to have like 15 versions of these shapes all over the place. So that, this is this is what I do in your claim if you ever invite me over, by the way. This is how it will look afterwards, so just, you're forewarned. So copy out your center and paste it over to the side, and then we're going to work on that to make impression. All right, Shyla, that looks great. So now what you're going to want to do is take the line tool and you're going to run it along the surface just to smooth out the, you know, the little... the voxel if it's below voxel size or shrinking it if it's above voxel size to make it uniform and, and voxel width. So this will actually be able to sit flat on a floor without deforming it as well when we're done. Um, so do that along the surface till you're satisfied with the look and stop if it starts to make it pull out on the curved part and undo it a step. And I'll start doing it on mine so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So you see down here on mine it's 
a little crooked, so I just take it and do this all along. Like taking a sander, and that's, I imagine that's what I'm doing when <laughs> I play this game. I've got my sander, I'm Bob the Builder, and I can fix it. Here we go. Okay, so you're sanding along, you're using the line tool along the flat side, right? not on the top. No, don't use it on the top. It will make it look, if you, it, it will be bad. Just real bad. It doesn't do curved surfaces. And you can see on your recall or on your on my stream, I've gotten it completely flat except this one spot right here. You can see it sticking out. When you selection, any part that's white is sticking out beyond the voxel plane, so it'll push things in when it touches them. So that's what we're going to be fixing. Some st some stuff just won't go any further in without artifacting or anything. So that's when you have to get in and like start doing a voxel mancy on it, which isn't as scary as it sounds. I'm having an issue with mine. All right, let me come see. Can, can we paint it white so I can see the surface? I have trouble seeing on textured surfaces. Uh -huh. Are we doing both sides? Yep, you're going to get both sides as clean and flat as you can get them. Thanks. Oh, I have it touching the mountain, don't I? That's okay. Just uh, copy it and repaste it somewhere else out of your middle selection. Plenty of room down there, down there too. I took like the entire claim and chopped it up, so we'd have plenty of space. You can also come over here too. After you've gotten your thing smoothed out in that little frame, you don't really need that part anymore, so you just you keep it in case you got to make another copy out of the center for some reason. But once we get this middle piece smoothed down and fixed, that's what we'll be using from then on. Oh, what the hell? Oh, <laughs> I guess the other claim is over there. Got a jag in mine, it won't go away. Yep, that's what I got in mine too. That's what we're gonna sh I'm gonna show you how to fix. It involves no reactors. Don't worry. Okay, so now I'm gonna line tool. Where do I line from? You're just gonna go from the wide, you know, your flat surface that's kind of the butt end that you had stuck in your frame. And you're going to just draw a line on the flat side, on both sides, all the way to the curve. And you're going to do that till you don't see any more lines, you don't see any more bumps, um, or it starts deforming the edge of your curve. If that happens, immediately stop and back up a step. And again, all you're doing is um, parts of your curve that uh, had the voxel like smushed in or pulled out, that's what was causing deformities on the surface and the line tool can kind of smooth those down by adding volume or decreasing volume where it needs to. I thought you were going to make yours all lumpy snap. Oh, you know, on the top, on the sides, I don't want to, I don't know, I could. You could have like a 3D effect going on. You could even have some, you know. Just keep in mind, if you have uh, chunks, it's going to take your surface inlay and make it spiky. It'll, it'll actually look very similar to what you've got, but flat. It could be kind of cool. I mean, 
you can like and you can always reshape it later with things you put near the surface like I showed you guys with the inlays and like putting the spikes on the ground you can reshape it after you're done and that's what I made a painting I like stuck a lighthouse on top of my hill and that was basically a spike I stuck on the top of the hill I was like hmm oh that's a lighthouse I was trying to make a tree and it didn't work so it became a lighthouse I am having an issue <laughs> I think Heel built her <laughs> cut out. Right? Come on, I can't reach mine now. Where did you go? There you are. You healed your cutout? No, no, no. Heelani put her cut right here so I can't reach with the line tool now. Oh, um, can you, can oh, you copy it and I put it over here? Mine. Put it right here. Uh, it's actually the claim end, so it cuts off the tip. Yeah, you can rotate it. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's actually, just just for future reference, I'm making you do this the hard way, guys. It works better if they're laying down flat, but there's no way we will all fit if we do that. So keep that in mind. Um, it, seems to deform less when you're working on it in general if it's laying down flat and that's because of the southeast deformation bug but we would not ever like, can you imagine so could we have an airplane wing factory going here you know the curve so the the top of the curve is going to have some like little triangulation going that's because, well, voxel faces are made of triangles, so when it's trying to make these curves, it's going to triangulate out. There's not really anything a, you can do about that. I have a bump on the side of it. It's not even that it's the, well, it's supposed to be one of the flat sides. It doesn't seem to want to change anymore. Yep, that's fine. Once you get to that point, stop, and I'm just waiting for everyone to get smoothed down. Let's get all smooth! Waiting for everyone to get smoothed and then go to the next step, which is fixing the stuff that won't fix with the line tool and how to do it. Because you can end up with one side that's like pretty good and the other side's going to have bumps. And so that's going to come out to our advantage. I'll be back. I just crashed. Not it. It wasn't me this time. <laughs> nope, it was me. <laughs> Just staying in here. I'm just seeing if I can get this to go out, because if it's if it's crooked on both sides, then it gets tricky. Okay, good. I fixed one side for lady. She's probably like, what's she doing to my stuff? I'm trying to make sure, because it gets significantly more difficult if it's crooked on both sides on the same spot. So what we're going to do is use the error to make the spot that's crooked straight. I think I have it as good as I can, because it's not really doing much other things. Yeah, you just want it to be smooth on one side. That's all that matters. And then we're going to manage to make the other side look. Okay, that side's sticking out. And that side's sticking in. Yeah, I picked a weird piece. No, this is cool. Like, let's make an awesome stair railing. Yeah. I got it to go down some more by doing a big line tool. But when I look at the up view, it like looks funky, but when you look at it from the side, it looks fine. But see how the front has like that little jagged edge? Yeah. Yeah, I got it to go flat by doing more line tool on it. And sometimes, yeah, this we're going to put down on the ground after we fix and make it 
like completely flat on both sides because I want to make it I want to show you guys how to make it so you can make this and like this actual thing here into stuff to use later like if you like it you can template it and build stairs on it or something put it on your wall I don't know but make an airplane <laughs> The whole right side is flat. Yeah. Like when you look at it from the up view now. Yeah, if you take the selection tool and put it over it and you don't see any parts going white or like, you know, going away from the selection box surface, then that's fixed it. Although it looks like one area went, I might have gone too far on one area and artifacted you. Well, on the one side it still looks fine, but on the left side it's it has the spaces. So the one side is not artifacted. Yeah, we're gonna actually use the side that's not artifacted to fix the side that is. Okay. Okay. So once you've gotten it smoothed down on one side, that's all that really matters. We're going to go to the parts that are bumps that are sticking out. Like, see how I have this big knob sticking out here? It's like bad on one side, and on the other it's not quite sticking out. You can see with the selection tool it probably is a little. little white bit right there. What we're going to do is we're going to take Voxel Petty, which you can get straight out of the ground from the, the line you just made in the ground to copy this shape out in the first place, um, or if you have it templated, you're going to put your voxel putty opposite the voxel that's messed up. Like, because it's the same voxel, right? On one side it's flat, on the other side it's messed up. We're going to take an impression of the air on the good side of the busted up voxel. I'm going to put it down so you can see it. And this is going to be something we're going to paste. We're going to we're going to actually mirror our voxel putty once we've pasted it, and paste it opposite. And what it does is it pushes in the side that's messed up to look the same as the side that's right. And I'm copying out just the top so you can see it's more or less smooth now. It's still a little wide. But compared to before, uh, now it's just a very tiny bit sticking out, just like the other side. And you're going to have to do that along the top everywhere that it's sticking out too much. So I will come along and help you if you have a whole bunch like Kelly, I'm probably gonna need to help you. you got, your your one side is like great, and the other side's like, wee, I'm crazy. I'm gonna stick out all over the place. So again, you want to copy oh, no. the. Does that make sense? So does everyone um, see what I mean? I'll show you on yours if it's if we've got any that are sticking out on any ones. Like yours is flat on both sides, so you don't have to worry about it, Shyla. Cool. And Hilani, you just have that one spot right here, right? So what you right. what you do? I'm gonna paint the voxel that's the offending voxel, right? So what you're going to do, and, and you might have to do it in two spaces, you're going to put voxel putty right next to this voxel I just painted wood on the good side. And then you're going to copy that piece of voxel putty and mirror it so it can go opposite of itself on the other side. And I'm going to do it so you can see what I'm talking about. So I put it there. And since you'll have to do it twice, you can do it again on the second one. I mirror it on the blue axis and then paste it down. And you, you should have been able to even see it snap into place. I did, that was cool. 
Voxomancy, woo! And now it's going to look like um, you're putting clear soul and it sits. <laughs> your, your shape was shaving and it cut itself and you're fixing the boo-boos. Mine has a lot of zits. <laughs> And they're weird shapes too. Look at the one leg of triangle. Well, no, you're putting them on. You're taking impressions from the side that's messed up. So you need to put them on this side, the side, um, the side we're on, because that's the good side. And you want to uh, put them. So you've actually marked where you can need to paste them. So it's not bad. So now you just have to paste them opposite of these where you've already put them, and you've got them marked out already. And you can just paste over the ones you put down. That's not a loss. And if if it gets uh, it shouldn't get messed up from you doing this to it because voxel putty won't deform your shape. So you can do this and you might see a line change on the surface of the curve, but that's because textures have to mesh and it's not necessarily deformity, it's like the texture redrawing itself to match the entire shape, not just the shape you already had. Because textures are weird in this game. To get it to lay flat on your inlay, you'll have to do this unless you want it to be more natural looking and more like a ruin, in which case you probably wouldn't want to fix it. But you should get get comfortable with doing this because you're going to be making a lot of curves. After you learn how to do this, it's like super addictive and all you want to do is like run around going, oh, that hill looks neat. I want to make a copy of it. I've actually uprooted claims. I've taken entire terrain templates and uprooted it and like moved it and gotten other templates from other terrains after doing this. And sometimes um, the curve will have a little dip in it and it won't be perfectly smooth and there's really nothing you can do about that because that that usually means the terrain did have that there like there was like a tiny chunk in the earth and it wasn't completely smooth. So I think everybody's gotten theirs. Yeah, none of mine are sticking out on the side, but they've got like weird indentions and stuff on the top. Yeah, and that's, so I think that's not really fixable. Terrain. Yeah, it's not really fixable on that. Um, you can like go in and do like more extreme manipulation. Um, oh, one thing you can do and it doesn't always work because curves are weird in this game. Uh, each triangle of each curve is completely unique. Like it repeats itself four times, every triangle and every curve. So you can't like, I, I tried at one point to like dismantle all the triangles and curves and see if I can make like Lego curves. Like we're we gonna assemble any size curve out of four shapes or something. It didn't work because they're all totally different. But what you can try to do is you can try painting, and I'm going to paint on your snap. You can try okay. try painting the top of your curve to see what it actually has going on in there. And if you see a shape that's really similar, you can try copying it and pasting it in. And as you see, like all of these shapes are totally unique. They're like snowflakes. Yeah. It's okay. I like living with imperfection. And I think it makes it more unique. You know, it's like you're not just making a circle and taking part of the circle and putting it on the ground. Your your shape's going to look completely unique, and no one will be able to uh, replicate yours, especially because it is literally part of the ground. It's like got a chunk in it that's from the terrain. You know. I think uh, everybody's got theirs. Kelly's putting all her zit cream on her still. And when you are done doing this, here's a really important step. Don't just delete off your voxel putty because it will warp the shape because of the southeast corner deformation bug. So you're going to make another copy of your shape after you're done putting all the fixes on your boo-boos.
Uh, I can fix Snapdragon's issue on top of it. If you only have those uh, weird uh, dimples up top, just uh, copy a whole shape. And if it's only on one side, then just copy it and copy it and paste it to that side. So you're pulling the problem away with the good side. Now copy the other side. And now you've taken care of most of those problems. But she liked it. Okay. <laughs> but yes, that That's fixes nice it. I gave, I gave you a little bit of facelift. There's still the, has a little bit issue up there. But I think if you copy this one and then go to the right instead, you'll fix that issue. Well, the line tool might do a little bit. Let's see. That putty would fix it up there, actually, because it's flat on one side now. That looks pretty good, right? Yeah, just take your selection box over it and see if it smoothed it out How equally. About the top part? Can I fix that? You can't really fix the slope. I see it's like sticking out. No, it's sticking Did in I... at one point. Oh, gone. There you go. The facelift. Mine had the same issue, so I was trying to fix it, being all quiet. <laughs> Oh, he was over there experimenting, not telling nobody. That's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for okay, for what we're you. doing with the inlays, it's probably fine. I just wanted you guys to know how to fix it. So if you did this again in your own, and were like getting, you know, warped up shapes, you could fix it. All right. So I think everybody's got a pretty good. Is everybody pretty satisfied? No, look at the tip of mine still. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, mine's doing that too. The the way to fix that is you saw how we did the frame on the bottom and the sides. Uh, do a frame in the front of it too. Mine's got a white spot sticking out now. It's, it got a zit. Let's fix it. Fix it. it fits. Oh yeah, yeah I see it. But now this side's got a zit. Yeah, that would be, you can get the voxel putty out and put it opposite on the, I'll paint the square. You paint it opposite of, of one of these two. I suspect the little triangle that I first did. Because you see it's like one shape on one side and a triangle on the other. So that's probably the culprit. Uh, but you put your putty there. You want to do it? So yeah, you can see it. My putty. You are, do you want me to do it on the ground? Like, yeah, there's there's plenty okay all around. To yeah, yeah. Snag some on the ground. Yeah, nothing's been built on this. You can probably copy um, any of the lines people made in the dirt too. It's true. Yeah, something they did with the last patch um, is terrible on the frames per second. I I was just on my other claim, and all I've done on it is terraform it. I haven't done anything else. And I was getting six frames per second. <laughs> there's like no props. There's not even a lot of voxels, because um, all I've done is terraform it. And it's, it's like, can't even yeah. work. It's got really bad. I hope they are fixing it. You gotta wait till Dave and them get back from E3 and get in the game, and they'll be like, "Oh, wait a minute, this is bad. This is not right. I gotta fix this." I'm sure, they talk just like that when they go to work too. I got a big old blob of putty. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. All right, so you're gonna copy that and mirror it on the uh, blue. So the blue axis, yeah, the blue axis, and then paste it on the opposite side of the voxel. And it might not fix it. It might also be that might also be happening because of another voxel nearby.
in which case you'll do like Kelly did and just put another piece of putty and, and do it again, like just repeat the, the process. So go ahead and copy out your putty there. Why is that putty so big? Is it really that one shape? I don't know. I probably, I'd probably grab two. I thought I only grabbed one. Oh, it could be handy. I mean, we like the top of that curve, so yeah, just copy the whole damn thing. Let me undo my paint. Yeah, copy the whole thing and then just mirror on the blue axis and put it on the opposite side of your wall in the exact same location. And we should see it snap into place. Haha, ha, see snap. I said snap. Ta-da! See, magic. Okay. It's a good thing I've, I've mastered putty after a month. It's about the only Voxomancy I can do. <laughs> it, it can do a lot. It's a workhorse. It does a lot of stuff. Once you learn how to do it, you're like, damn, where's this been all my life? would probably fix that. Yeah, copy the very, very center without your putty and then we're gonna go lay it down on top of our original pixelated impression that we did. And we're gonna, we're gonna rotate it. it. You're not happy with it? Let me, let me put mine down to show and then I'll come help you. you line it up with the flat corner. Like you have it, you know, as a regular set of voxels down in the one corner of it, and you're just gonna lay it directly on top. Unless you mess up like me, and then you're not gonna lay it directly on top. It's like I put putty there, and it still works. I'm going to copy your whole shape out again. Oh, you already did. Of course, you know, mine's white. <laughs> so I have to push it down into my shape or right on top of it? You're just going to lay it right down on top of it. Like you see um, over here, I've got mine laying on the ground. Okay. Copy just like me, you want to, you might, when you lay it down, you might line it up with that corner and might find that it doesn't fit anymore. It may have shrunk, right? So you're going to probably have to move it up and you'll just, you'll look at it like when you copy it, copy it out from underneath what you laid down on top of it and paste it up in the air so you can see what happened. Yeah, the one underneath was like really wobbly. It had like roller coaster hills on it. Yeah. Yeah, that looks cool. And sometimes there's little divots in it. You can repaint it. You can do it whatever you want. There's little divots in there too. Sometimes, you know, it has that. Sorry, Snap. Copy the ground where you had your pixelated surface. Like your original pixelated imprint you made with the okay. putty. You're going to copy that out from under your um, shape that you just put down on the ground there and put it up in the air. Here, Kelly, I'll fix it. Okay, that's going to be our board that we work on. Well, yeah, right? but it's going to be, you, you'll see it's like an inlay. So did you put the putty on to fix it? No, I, because most of the problem you had was on top of it. It just looked like it was on the side, so I just uh, copied it to the worst side. So I copied it to the left, and I just copied the right part after that. Oh, okay. Thank you. It was just an illusion that... It was another problem that you had. Oops, I got it upside down. 
See, I think these just look really, they're like really fun to play with to me. Because it's not perfect, right? It's not like a perfect curve. Like yours has a little chunk, but you know what? That was there. That's what was in the ground. Um, if you have any deformities, that means that it wasn't completely flat, the surface you laid down on top of it, and you can generally fix it with the line tool, but not always. So you'll probably have to go back if you have a deformity um, and check your shape to make sure it wasn't in further than you thought and you just couldn't see it like a little tiny bit. Like mine should have a little deformity in the very top. So mine was not perfectly this is an flat. Option. When you look at it from one direction, it's smooth. When you turn it the other way, there's a point sticking out. Oh yeah, because it's Look below it the surface. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've seen that. But it's flat. That's cool. If you put your selection box on it, you know, and then put... Whoops. <laughs> I fell. If you put your selection box on it and then put your mouse over it to make the selection box light up, it looks like it's totally flat. It like, must be dipped in. Yeah, that's what I'd say normally, but the selection box says no. Oh well. well. That's cool though. I don't see anything. No, you gotta come from this side to see it. Oh. What? I see it from the top looking down. Isn't that cool? That is messed up. Oh, it's the white stuff that's dimpled. Uh, I see it. I see the problem now. And now you notice when you take this impression you made, you know, you reshaped it. If you put it up in the air and look on the bottom, it's deformed on the bottom. It's still your pixelated imprint. Um, mine is severely smaller than... Yeah. So you want to line up your this part with the top. If it got shrunk, because that happens, you're just going to line up the top of your curve as best you can with this and just, yeah, I think you got it, actually. Do I do it that bottom part or just copy from that side over? I would just copy from that side over. Let's see what happens when we copy out from under it. Well, yours is really small. And where'd it go? Oh my god. <laughs> All right, so that was too far. So try let's let's remember uh, go down towards the base of it one more voxel, and that should be good. Gotta go get my shape again. Yeah, if it's if it's stretched out instead of being a smooth curve, then it was too far. Um, and then what you do since it's gonna be, oh, hold on. Mine's actually good on both sides. I have no idea how that happened. It's supposed to be pixelated on one side and smooth on the other, but I'll take it. That's cool. If it's pixelated on the other side, you just apply your shape again to the side that's pixelated, and it will make it nice on both sides. Like, you can see mine where I had a jaggedness to it that actually went through. You can see it. So you can see mine's messed up. And if I tried to fix it with the line tool, it would mess it up even more, so I couldn't do that. Mine has two little pimples on it. <laughs> yeah, try applying your original shape, your nice smooth one, the smooth side to it, and see if that fixes it. Like your smoothest side. Put it underneath it? Yeah. Uh, apply it to the the one you pulled out from the ground. Yeah, I see it underneath. I gotta go get a copy of my shape again.
I have a hole on the underside of mine. So do I. So you're going to take your shape and line it up with the one that you put underneath. Uh, line, line, it, line it up with the copy you made of the one you pulled out of the ground. And you're going to paste your smoothest side of your shape to it. Okay. Let me make sure that fixes it before I tell everyone to do that. I probably should have done that first, huh? Yeah, that should fix it. Let's do another step. Yeah, if you want it to be smooth and the same as your shape on both sides, you'll have to paste your shape underneath. I was just admiring the way it changes. Okay. I'll probably use mine as a background for, I'm not going to use it as a stair rail or, well, I guess if we're going to try to make, do something else. Yeah. I guess I might, might as well fix it on both sides. Well, it doesn't hurt and it might, um, if there's any kind of little deformities that you can't see yet, that don't show up till you're like painting it or something, it would fix that. It would straighten it all out on both sides. Sometimes it's good just to have that. I think everyone's got so there. So can you copy it after we place it on the bottom? Yeah, you're going to copy out your original and you're, you're going to copy out the one that you're trying to fix, right? And look at the bottom and see if that fixed it. And you should end up with the same shape on both sides and it should be relatively smooth and pleasant. And at the edges, if it's got a nick taken out or something, you can just take, like, especially if it's at the tip, where your, your tip of your shape got messed up with the smooth tool, you can just uh, do the line tool on the edge here. Over here, you see how it's got this little bit? I'm going to paint it. Like, that's all jagged, right? You can just draw the line right. tool over it. Okay. See? And that brought it out again. Because sometimes you can't um, correct, you can't keep the smooth tool from fixing it for you when it's really tiny like that at the end without destroying your circle or sphere or shape or whatever you're doing. When everyone's done, I can teach you how to make this a negative so you can have the shape but have it cut out. Or I can teach you how to make it um, so you can cut it into things, I think. I think that would probably be more useful, actually. And now you all can make mountain scenes for dentist office art. <laughs> so that's what I was doing with mine. Yay. Yeah, exactly. And for the next step, we're going to go below, and we're going to take our shape down below, and we're going to do bad things to it. We're going to totally destroy it, but it's okay. Everybody pretty happy with what they got here? you have any questions about it, anyone? <laughs>